Well, joining us now to discuss uh, what that investigation throws up, Harminder Sani of Vazir Advisors tracks the online retail space very closely, and Yatish Rajavat, the Chief Strategy Officer at Local Circles. In fact, Local Circles uh, had done a poll with CNBC TV18 had carried, which showed that 62% consumers had found a significant variation between online reviews and an actual product received, highlighting the crisis of confidence uh, with uh, online retail. Gentlemen, appreciate you joining us here uh, on the show. Uh, Harminder, let me start by asking you, I mean, uh, you know, platforms usually take the route saying, look, we're only providing the platform, it's others who are providing the product. Uh, can they continue to absolve themselves of all responsibility? When you're seeing things like 60% of the sports goods sold on online platforms are counterfeits. See, I don't think so. First, to answer your question, I don't think they absolve them of the responsibility saying that we are just the platform. Because eventually, consumers are buying it on Flipkart, and Flipkart is advertising, Amazon is advertising, and they're saying, come online, come to our store and buy whatever you want. Beyond yeah. that, goes without that we will stand by what you're buying from here. Mm. They're getting the real stuff. But it's an open secret no, so that who... people are not getting, they are buying, and... Uh, no, so who's responsible then? Who should be held accountable? Who should be responsible uh, for a fake that is sold on a platform? Uh, what does the consumer do? What is the recourse to the consumer? I think the consumer, whether the law says it or not, I think the recourse is straight goes to the retailer who is putting this product online because there's no difference in buying online or offline as long as you're buying through a retailer. Whatever may be the legality of it, I think it's mm. a matter of detail. But eventually, consumer is buying from the retailer, whether they go to Big Bazaar offline or whether they go to a Flipkart online. I think the responsibility has to lie with the mm. retailer only. And if they don't take the responsibility, and if they come out clear and loud that we will not take the, the responsibility, let's see how much is in them, how many consumers will continue to shop with them. Yeah, but Harminder, what can online platforms like Flipkart, like ShopClues do? Uh, you know, we've got statements from at least companies like ShopClues saying that they, there's a zero tolerance policy, etc. But clearly, that doesn't seem to be working if this investigation uh, shows that, you know, in just one category, the, the counterfeits uh, are, are uh, you know, 60% in the sports goods category. See, Shireen, it's very clear that most of the consumer product companies, they have their quality control, their quality check methods to do. There are some people who follow it 100% and ensure that nothing goes wrong. And there are companies which are lesser in, in these terms and they allow these things kind of slippages to happen in their quality, in their packaging and lots of other stuff. So I think that's differentiate between the good brand and a bad brand. And similarly, this will differentiate between the really mm. serious and senior customer-centric retailer versus the retailers who are trying to just make hay while the sun shines. So I think whether it's 60% uh, yeah. compliance or a 60% failure, it has to come down to close to zero. Nobody can take it down to zero, even in the real yeah. world. So even in offline, there are lots of fakes floating around. So let's not only say it's only online. So the good brands and the retailers for their own reputation, okay. for keeping their consumers to them and make them loyal, I think they have to bring it down close to okay. zero. And for that, they will have to make investments. For that, they will have to take services of people. They have to have surveillance. They have to literally take people to the courts yeah. to ensure that these People who are trying to sell fakes, they are taken to trust yeah. even one case like that will yeah. discourage uh, 100 others. Ab but as Absolutely. of now, we don't see much of that happening uh, in, in, in this case. No, we, 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 we don't. So we, uh, we will need to see much more proactive action by platforms uh, against retailers who are offering fake products on their platforms. Of Yatish Rajavat, one is the problem of fakes that we've just talked about. But the other is the problem of you know, the, you know, uh, fake reviews, for instance, customer dissatisfaction about what you were advertising and what finally is sent to my house being two very different things altogether. And that's what your local circle survey throw, threw up. So there is, in a sense, a trust deficit and a crisis of confidence, is it not, which should be worrying for the online uh, retailers. Shireen, you know, <clears throat> we've observed that the trust deficit is continuously growing uh, exponentially with uh, most of these e-commerce companies and they do not realize that uh, in their search for the gross merchandise value which is the total amount of sale they're actually mm. losing customers uh, mm. as they go by you know they have created a system which basically encourages uh, fake reviews uh, 
they market it as a selling proposition. Mm. They al allow sellers to come on board without verifying their antecedents or whether they are genuine yeah. dealers of a brand or not. And these are basics mm. which every offline retailer like a Big Bazaar or a uh, you know t uh, any of the trends or uh, even the Reliance uh, retail follows to the T yeah. because they yeah. do not want to carry a product which does not come through the dealer network. If you remember, you know, a year or mm. two back, you know, Samsung and LG has actually gone and said that we will not sell, allow any of our brands to be sold online. And the reason mm. for that was that there was a yeah. conflict which was happening between their branded stores and mm. the e-commerce guys. The e-commerce e platform were actually discounting yeah. it to an extent that it was harming their dealer network. Now, these are uh, yeah. these yeah. Are issues of trust deficit per se, and they have not created mm. system and processes on it. Another facet of it is, which I must point mm. out to you, is that, you know, where does these fake actually come from? And why are they able to subvert the whole system? Yeah. The, these fakes are coming mm. directly from China and Malaysia. And they are being rooted through free okay. trade agreements that we have had with Singapore, you know, for instance. So, now, who has yeah. taught them this yeah. route? The very subsidiary of these platforms mm. have taught them this route because their largest sourcing, like mm. in the case of uh, uh, Amazon's Cloud Tail, which is based out of Singapore. Now, they've taught them that there's a possibility for you yeah. to route the whole exchange out of Singapore into India directly mm. without going through mm. any uh, custom clearances or even custom duties. So they would have been a check if the fake would have come from the uh, you know proper route and it would have been checked by custom at some level or the other okay. or in a dock. Now, at a, but okay. that does not happen for so, the so, e-commerce guys. So that's that's so, so larger quantity sure. yeah, is going into e-commerce than it is going into the uh, you know in the offline retail market so to say. Up. Offline yeah, retail market. Fair, fair point you make. Uh, but but Harminder, let me come back to you now. And what's the way forward? Because, you know, uh, so far, uh, this business has largely sort of stayed out of the government's hair, so to speak. Uh, there has been a lot of clamor for more regulation. What is this likely to lead to? And what is the need of the hour, given the state of the industry? So, yeah, I think two the things are happening, as you might be aware forward. of. Folks. One second, Yatish. I'll just, I'll just come to you, Yatish. Yeah, Harbinder, go ahead. Yeah, I was saying, industry players themselves will have to realize that the, amount, the potential which they are going after is enormous. And these are early days. Whether you are 100 million mm. down here or 200 million up there, it's not going to matter when the e-commerce industry is going to become 100, 200 billion in this country in the coming times, in our own lifetimes. That will be the real time mm. when you will be mm. seriously large players. Right now, the, whatever is happening, I think it's too small to even bother. Look at the numbers in China, yeah. look at the numbers in US. And making these kind of uh, yeah. concessions yeah. Yeah. to your merchants to allow them to sell fake products, I for, uh, for personally, I would not mm. like to believe that they are encouraging it and showing people these kind of paths to do it. But even if they are turning a blind eye to something sure. which is happening on their platforms, I think they are hurting themselves yeah. more than anybody else. Because as a consumer, I may buy something fake today, no, uh, I'll stop buying from them. Yeah. But what is going to happen to their own businesses? Ab so I think ab industry absolutely. has to come together and yeah. really, really take steps where before yeah. any huge regulation starts coming on them and they are start, they start getting controlled, like we have yeah. seen in case of... Uh, shared uh, cab uh, system that how much more regulation can come in and how it sure, can hurt the sure. business overall. Yeah. I think the, the responsibility lies uh, clearly with the absolutely. industry players themselves. And like I said, it's very The responsibility does lie with the industry, yeah. So they, they with, should with, take with some preemptive action. Yatish, yeah, very quickly, we're running out of time. Yatish, a final comment from you. So, uh, Shireen, there are two things which are happening. As you know that the Department of Consumer Affairs and the Legal Metrology Act has basically said from January 1 onwards, the e-commerce company have to make the complete disclosure of the MRP and best before product. You were talking about sports goods, but these okay. kind of fake and counterfeit products also exist for branded food products. Okay? So, what is going to happen from January okay. 1 is that they will have to show you the price detail as it is existing on the product, which they never used to do earlier. So therefore, they could discount it to an X okay. level, okay? Without you knowing the actual price mm. of the product. When they show you the pricing itself, okay. you know okay. that is this a fake or not, uh, you know, by mm. seeing the picture itself. So that's a very crucial change that's going to come to them. Sure. And they're all struggling to meet that from January from Jan 1. 1.
Shirin. Yeah. All right, gentlemen, we'll have to leave it there. Jan, one could see uh, changes that will perhaps uh, uh, try and alleviate some of the pain that consumers are facing while shopping on online platforms. Uh, Harminder and Yatish, appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18.